Reptilius 258 here, and this is the flagship of the USR Tech Tree in Fractured Space. This is the first ship that you get. It is a highly defensive, decent damage, terrible utility ship. Um, it's very newbie friendly, it's also very hard to play as a veteran, and is quite a mixed bag because it looks sturdy it has a very nice hull strength of 15,000 but yet it gets killed constantly by one thing it's slew so its armor as a frontline vehicle is rather contradictory because you can't actually get to the front lines its damage is also not as high as you would think it would or should be. It I feel like it's not an equal exchange. The amount of damage I take compared to what I give out is not necessarily balanced. So why would you want to fly this thing? Well, let's see what you get with it. Um, Alright, so your first main batteries, you have a choice of two different things. You have flak or photonic charges. Flak has an effective range of 8,600 meters with an area of effect of 750, so you have about a good range of about 9,000 meters with this gun. Um, travel time of two seconds, not exceedingly fast. Uh, damage 180, decent-ish. Rate of fire 0.6. That is significantly significant. What? No. That is pretty fast. And your other choice is the photonic charges, which have a range of 10,200 with an area of effect of 1,000, so 11,000 meters effective range. Um, 1.5 second travel time, shorter. Damage 270. Higher rate of fire, one second per shot. Hmm, that's a little slow. So, the main choices you get is a shorter range. Well, actually, that's not even a fair comparison. They're both very short range. 2,000 meters is not much. In this thing, it is, but in retrospect for the enemy, it's not. So you have a choice between two guns. You have one that does smaller amount of damage but has a faster fire rate or you can do more damage but have a slower uh, rate of fire. And from that you get again kind of a mixed bag of what damage you can and can't do. The flak is by itself a very good weapon choice. Photonic choices, charges, same deal, but they both have their quirks. Flak, while short range, is still short range, and that can limit you from getting up to your target and being able to deliver fire if they just get a little bit farther away from you. However, it does shoot faster, so it's easier to hit out missiles when they're coming at you. Um, However, despite that, the photonic charges have a better range, so it's easier to engage things, but you don't do nearly as much damage at close range especially, but at long range you just can't deliver your charges as effectively, because it's still a farther distance. Plus, however, their area of effect, 1000 meter radius, that is however kind of significant, because it actually it makes it a little bit better for hitting out missiles coming towards you, than the flak does. But that fire rate is still a problem. Mainly because despite either of these um, the ability of either of these the guns on the flagship do not churn fast at all. If And this is a close range ship so it's churn rate just for its guns is really really painful. So it kind of matters how fast your 
bullet can fly and how far the target is. Um, having used both flak and photonic charges, I'm gonna say for yeah, I think I'm going to have to say photonic charges would be better. Flak, while very good with friends to help you keep alive, it's great for short range, it's great for taking out missiles at short range again. However, photonic charges is definitely better for one-on-one -on -one and also or one-on-two engagements, mainly because you can hit them twice at a time if they're next to each other for some reason. Plus, the extra range helps if your opponent in his flagship for example, is using flak. But this is just personal experience. I would say they're quite equal. It all depends on your playstyle. Disable. Disable is an interesting thing. Disable is, it has a nice range of 15,000, so it's easy to stop your target, get close to them, and start hitting them. However, it, its cooldown is pretty high compared to its duration, making it a very selective thing because if you're using flak it means you can get quite a few shots off but still do the same but you will do more damage with flak than you would photonic charges which only gets one per shot so there it's kind of equal but for five seconds that's all it is and that's where that kind of differential comes in disable is kind of a saving grace for your speed because it means you can catch up to them, you can get within range, and your terrible turret traverse means that they don't move so you can hit them, which is nice, but it only lasts five seconds, and then they're out of there. Um, disable, despite the name, also does not disable any abilities of the enemy. So if they're in a hunter or something else that has a uh, little micro phase jump kind of thing attached to their ship, they can still get away from you and still start hitting you at range again. It doesn't disable any abilities, it doesn't disable weapons, it just disables their engines. So they can still shoot back at you. Um, the boosts. Now you get three boosts. Boosts are an interesting bag of chips. The first one is a long duration boost that takes two minutes to cool down and will move you quite a 15 kilometers or 15,000 meters through a little bit of few tests that I did myself um, which means if you use the disable it's very easy to close your target and you'll be next to them so that's nice but depending on what ship you just warp, uh, warped no um, afterburnered yourself to might have a higher damage potential at close range such as the brawler um, Short boost, same deal, just shorter, quite simple. And the cooldown is halved, which is nice. But even the duration is halved, too. So you can use it more often, you just can't use it for a better range. So 7,000 meters boost is what I'm going to guess. Gyro, it spins you. Which is an interesting thing, because on the one side, it takes forever to cool down. But on the other side, it means that you can turn your ship. Because this thing moves like a brick. So a little bit of agility is quite nice, but regardless of that, it's still not very helpful for getting to your target. Maybe if your target's there already and they've taken the armor off of one side, you can spin around real quick, but the likelihood is they'll just fly over you and just continue hitting where you're weak. They don't need to stay where they are. The disable will not do it, so yeah. Now, the missiles. Missiles are an interesting thing. There are three kinds, they all do the same amount of damage, and they all have the same range of 14,000 meters. So you can get a little bit of extra damage in there and all that, but there's... Okay, I mentioned that with flak and photonic charges, it's very easy to hit out missiles from the sky, negating any damage they could have possibly done at the range of where your flak is exploding which means that approaching flagships or anything with missiles approaching you and you have your flak going already this is not a reactionary thing this it has to be going already you can hit them out of the sky and they are destroyed same for photonic charges missiles however the way they are mounted that is what the difference is in all three of these how they are mounted on your ship and how they 
move away from your ship towards your target. Now the first missiles, they go out from the sides. So the left side of your ship and the right side of your ship. And they go out and then they move towards it. For anybody trying to counteract that, you would go to the left and then you would go to the right. Taking out either one side completely or just taking out three. Well, it's four and four, so you would take out like three on this side, then move your gun, which is really hard to do because of that turret traverse, and then take out the other three. So you only get hit with maybe two. Or you can stay and negate an entire side and maybe get one or two on the others. Radial missiles make their job really easy by shooting out in a circular pattern around your ship. What this means is, since they'll be pointing their flak or photonic charges at you, and you guys are coming at each other, or whatever you're in, and you're coming at each other, they'll, and this is a tip for you when you're playing, you always keep the gun firing even if you're not doing damage when you're approaching, because it will shoot down those missiles. So, your enemy's doing this too, and you're radial missiles come out in a perfect circle so that means they just have to continue doing what they're doing which is shooting directly at you while your missiles rush perfectly in front of their guns to be destroyed by their flak or photonic charges so radial missiles while they look really pretty they're actually quite useless especially for something that is aiming directly at you um, the last one is dorsal missiles. Dorsal missiles are, well, kind of what they do in the name, say in the name, dorsal, top, fin, dolphin, which means they come out of the top, and only the top. So it's basically kind of like the missiles for the first part, except they're all on the top now, and the person still has to move their gun up to shoot the top, which, due to the height that these things go, usually gets them out of the radius that you're... Um, the discharge radius of your guns so if you're at close range like you're on the brink of your range and they somehow managed to get their gun there because they were I don't know predicting your missiles that's impossible by the way and started shooting there it's likely that you won't be taking the uh, area of effect damage but if anything I would say you would either go with missiles or dorsal missiles you would skip radial they're useless they are they just make the job easier for the enemy not for you for the enemy they look cool but that's all they got so dorsal or missiles um next are the drones the drones are the last thing that do damage on this ship like pure damage there are three kinds there's the swarm drone which are basically um lightly armored ships fighters drones that do a little bit of damage and last for 40 seconds. 4 times 4, 1,600. That's the amount of damage you can do with your drones on one ship, theoretically. Um, the other thing is slow drones. Oh, by the way, the ra approximate range of these drones is about the same range as your main weapons, so you can't really bombard things at a longer distance. Just keep that in mind. Everything here, actually, is pretty much within the range of everything else. Except for the missiles. Missiles are your long-range weapon, which is still not that long range, at 14,000 meters. Um, what was I saying? Slow drones. Slow drones. Um, slow drones kind of work in tandem with your disable. Your disable completely, 100% stops the ship for 5 seconds. Slow drones do it by 50, which is still quite significant, but doesn't and it lasts a lot longer 30 seconds that's already six times as long as the disable um, however they have a very kind of strange range for their approximate max range 30,000 meters is out of range of every weapon system you have and unless you have say a sniper buddy who's asking you to do it for you it's a really useless thing at long range. At short range, it can be quite helpful. It makes it easier for you to hit them. It makes it easier for them. Makes it easier for you to keep them pinned, pretty much, because your disable la cooldown lasts only 26 seconds. So that means if you have your slow drones going for 30 seconds, so five seconds plus 30 seconds plus another five seconds for 40 seconds, you have their speed reduced significantly.
which makes it easier for you to shoot and harder for them to get out of range. However, they are... However, I have not used them due to the fact that it is unlikely you'll be in a situation where you need to keep somebody pinned and keep them from running away. If they're running away, they're already on low enough health, you probably have a buddy who has better range than you who can just simply one-shot. Snipers, for example. The last kind of drones you get are plasma drones. Plasma drones are a have the same range as swarm drones, 10,000, so that means they're in the range of everything else you have. However, they have the damage of plasma, which is kind of like a dance thing. Five seconds, you get 25 damage. Um, now, plasma does two things. Plasma both does damage per second, and it also strips away armor as well. So you increase the chance of the armor being stripped on the other side, therefore increasing the damage you do and the damage they can mitigate through their armor because of this. Um, it is a very useful tool, especially for the fl flagship, because your damage potential, your damage per minute, is not actually that high. You might be able to say, oh, I have missiles, oh, I have my flak or photonic charges, I do quite a bit of damage. You're only going to be able to do, depending on which one you're using, 100, 180 to 270 respectively. That is not necessarily very high, especially over a period of time. It will take you 10 seconds to do 2,500 damage, sorry, 2,700 damage, theoretically, to any one ship. And depending on what you're shooting at, that's usually never enough. 10 seconds. And if, you're in, if it's a brawler, for example, they will have done 1,200 damage in one volley that one second already. 10 to 1, that's not very good. And the Brawler is also a very close range uh, ship as well, so two close range ships and I wonder which one will win. So Plasma Drones are kind of helpful because it increases that damage per minute that you can or cannot do, depending on your situation. If I were to recommend any of them, I would recommend either the Plasma Drones or the Swarm Drones. The Swarm Drones are good to learn how to use the drones, but I'll get the to that in a minute. Um, the engine, engine, 300 meters per second, that's how fast you can go. Alright, so, so what was it going on about when I was talking about how it's a very difficult, it's a very noob friendly ship, but it's also a very hard ship to play as a veteran. Well, on the one side, from a new player perspective, it's very easy to learn how to play, because the weapon the damage model that they use, just shoot everything you see, it does quite a bit of damage. It does very good damage on clustered enemies as well, hurting multiple people at one time. But it also means that... Um, it also means learning is very simple as well. It's very You get into the hang of trying to figure out how to, how to, keep, to pay attention to several different weapon systems. It's all within close range, which makes it kind of easy, but you still have to pay attention, especially on the approach. It also helps you learn how to use your abilities properly. That boost ability is, while well, very helpful, very, very tricky to get the hang of. Trying to decide whether or not you want to use it to just quickly get to a certain position and hold it tactically, or to use it as an offensive means to close the distance between your enemy and take them out. Um, but that's a veteran kind of thing. As a new player, it's an extra speed boost to get more damage on whatever you need, and then shooting your missiles. Paying attention to your missiles when that reload is up again. Um, drones, it's easy to learn how to use drones. When I was talking about the swarm drones, it made sense. They're very simple drones. They just do damage. It's not hard. It's, a, it's not complicated. Plasma, you get a little more complicated, which is where I say it's a lo good learning ship, because things change. Things become different. You have to factor in a few more things that you don't usually do when you first start a game. And that's all in one ship. So the swarm drones are very easy. It's you learn how to target a ship. You learn how to set them to defend yourself instead of targeting another ship. You set them. You learn how to say defend another ship. Um, take your pick of what you want to do with the drones, um, and all that other wonderful stuff. Oh, and then the disable, for example, using that thing properly. Like if you use it too far away at the perfect 
range of 15,000 and you start launching your missiles, you don't have the boost, you're pointing the wrong way, your guns can't reach, it was really wasted, you have to wait another 30 seconds for it to reload. So, it's all that. As a veteran, as a veteran player, and having played this a few times just for this little th video here, it is a really hard ship to play. The way you want to play it as is this very defensive, very easy to tank, very very simple you hurt me, I hurt you back twice kind of ship to make it it would make it look dangerous. It would fit the name, flagship. Usually a very important, very detrimental you must kill ship. That's usually what flagship implies, but with the flagship in this game, it's contrary to that. If you want to play it as a very tanky damage per second, sorry, damage per minute uh, ship, you're going to have a bad time and you're just going to die. Unless you have a whole lot of support craft, in which case, depending on the situation, may have abandoned you, which happens a lot, or they're just not doing their job. And therefore, your tanking ability is therefore greatly decreased. You will die. I have died in one-to-one -one battles with ships that do not have even half the amount of health that I do. That is how vulnerable this thing still is, despite its amount of health. So as a veteran, you can't really move it very fast. It's not maneuverable, so you can't get away very fast. You can't put yourself in a very good position. So you really rely on your team quite a bit, and in multiplayer gaming, that's a really hard thing to find, especially on a random battle. If you have friends, that's great, but that's a different matter entirely. This is for a single player, single player for example. So as me, when I play it, I keep thinking, and I know it's not true, but I still keep thinking, I'm in a big ship. I need to be distracting the enemy, and I need to rely on my friends to heal me. That has happened in one game, and one game only, and that is the game I'm about to show you later. Other than that, it has never happened, and I have left my friends I went ahead of my friends so they would so my the support ships would not die and I would be taking the damage while they repair me. But instead of repairing me, they repair each other and they started shooting him at the enemy. Which confused me and I still see it. I don't know why. But that's beside the point. They don't help you unless you unless they're good players or you have specifically asked them. I've also had um, at one point where it was two to three. It was two guys on one side, three on the other. Two on the other side were doing heavy defensive. I asked them to do it. They did it. It was really nice. Um, I told the two support craft to support me to go ahead because the other two guys they were not in flagships. They weren't really. There was one flagship and one support on the other side. There was a hunter on my side, me, and one support ship. It was a nice fit. The hunter would blip around, giving su uh, supportive fire, harassing the enemy, making sure no assassins appeared, because there was an assassin on the other team. I would go ahead, I would help do with the damage, he would supplement, and our little support guy would keep us both either healed or protected, while also offering a little bit of extra damage. I believe he was in a disruptor, so he could, to an extent. However, as soon as he got shot once by some drones, not a ship, drones mind you, he got the hell out of there faster than I could say stop and stay. And I eventually just lost all my health because I didn't have any support. And the hunter guy, he just blipped out of there. He said, okay, we have no support. We're going to lose. He got out. And I was under heavy fire. I was in the middle of it all. You can't leave because if I hit that uh, jump to home, I miss out on any potential damage, extra damage I could do to them, which would severely either force them to retreat or to g attempt to go forward and cap the point before I return. And if I had done that, I would have died instantly. So I have to stay there for like an extra two to three seconds doing what little amount of damage I can do, and then eventually just explode. So that's where I say it's a horde thing sorry, a hard thing to do for a veteran player, because you're relying on your team, but at the same time your team doesn't really care. And it's this really hard mix right there. 
So, and that's why it's good for new players, because it means it's just like, you go out, you do damage, hey, you get a kill too, but you died, eh, it's one-to-one -one death ratio. Not that that really matters or anything, you just learning how to play, so, yee. Um, personally, I don't like this ship. It's, it doesn't fit my playstyle first, but it also doesn't fit the fact that I don't know what to do with it. I feel like I rely, it's too much of a team ship. So I can't rely on myself to just live long enough to get away. I can't get away because it's so slow. And if I don't have any allies with me, I'm the only guy they're going to be shooting. And despite that large amount of health you may have, you'll just see how quickly it goes away in about three seconds. So that's it for its um, base stats. That's a, how I think it is. And how it is a very good ship for new players, but not very much for veterans. So I'm going to stop talking now and continue talking in a gameplay video. Alright, so I'm in, I jumped into a battle, I'm in my flagship. Um, fits up in the left hand, I used flak and I used plasma drones with the stock set of missiles if I do recall. Um, so the battle I'm in, I've got, I know I have support, there is a coveter, so I can, I think I'm, I wanted to follow him, so that's basically what I did, and we all started going to Alpha, all of us, I, I was, oh, I, it was at this point right here, I was just thinking, do I go back, or, I mean, somebody needs to go to B, I mean, look at the map, there's somebody in B too, I should, probably start heading back and all that and, um, and I do because there needed to be somebody in beta I thought about like getting the coveter guy but I thought eh, this is a random battle there's no way I can do that plus I was thinking I only have to defend I don't really have to do anything because I only thought there was going to be one guy so I jump into system um, everything's going good and all that there's that boost ability. I zoom in to look for things over there. I saw there was a hunter. He jumped over. I saw that there was another one up there, and I thought, oh, he jumped back there. And I'm like, oh, wait, no, there's two. And it was about this point where I was thinking, okay, I need to get into this point and hide. Because two hunters can definitely kill me. I'm not going to lie to you. You can get killed by hunters in this thing. So I hide behind this. I take a little tiny bit of damage, but not very much. Hunter at long range isn't very deadly. It's when it gets nearby you, it's deadly. So at this point, I was like, where the hell is he? And I look up, and there he is. I'm like, oh, damn it, he's got missiles already. So I disable him so he can't move. Gets me very good shots on him, and I start throwing out my missiles. Um, those do damage. I have my drones out on him. And... I just keep hammering. I'm ignoring the other guy. However, I also didn't notice that he moved away. Yeah, the hunter started descending. I was like, ah, oh, damn it. By the time I realized, it took me a while, I eventually realized, oh, I need myself to start going up. And I start rising. I disable him again just so I can catch up. And my health's still going down. It's going really down really fast. So it's just proof to you. You, you die in this thing. So I'm laying down flak, I finally get close enough to do some damage, and I zoom out and I realize, oh, I'm being attacked by leech drones too. So I throw my flak up, more missiles and all that, and now I'm just dead. That was my first death in this. Um, I knew I just needed to defend, and I thought, oh, I can just defend. But by the time I realized, oh, there's two hunters in system, I was already halfway there, so I said, I am committed. So I came back here, because I'm still the only one defending beta, so I have to I have to come back to beta. And I keep thinking, I need to call my friends over, but I'm like, I have no time to call my friends over. <sighs> and here, I'm not following my own advice. I kept saying earlier how you should definitely... Um, keep your missiles going constantly 
sorry, missiles, not missiles, your flak going constantly to dodge those missiles. And I didn't do that. And I got hit by two barrages, I think three maybe, if the other guy shot two. Three barrages of missiles that I easily could have taken out. And I didn't because I was thinking, what do I do now? Um... So the hunter's jamming me, but that's not a big problem at the moment. And I see fire coming down from the right side, so already I know it's three against one now, and I'm thinking, I'm dead. So I keep thinking, I will get him, I will get him, I will get him, I will get him. And I do, but I die soon after. And I don't know how, but I somehow glitched inside my ship. <laughs> it was a really strange look. Um, that's besides the point. But yeah, see, this thing cannot tank. I mean, yes, I was three against one, but you saw just how fast my health went down from fighting just two. There was really, really distant supporting fire from that third hunter, because that's what I thought it was. I wasn't sure. And that was the only thing I could think of. So I jumped back and attempted to try and get him. He freaking jumped again. Um, at the moment I was thinking, I was thinking, okay, I should start laying fire, fat, flak down to stop those missiles, but then I looked and I was like, oh, nope, they're too close. Yeah, when I say the flak can knock out missiles, what I'm doing now, right now, where I'm just firing completely, put up your flak. Why aren't you putting your flak up? Ugh. Flak. Sorry. What was I going on about? Yeah, I kept putting that up because I kept thinking missiles were going to start coming at me and I stopped and I shouldn't have. Um, then I had some friends over, so that was nice. They eventually came by. I finally figured out how to use the flak button and he jumped next to me, which was at this point really stupid of him and showed for the first time in this that being close is sometimes helpful as it is unhelpful for this for the flagship. He jumped again, because hunters do that. You can see just how slow the traverse is for those guns. Um, I'm looking around, round? looking around for him, trying to figure out where he went. I have no idea. Oh, there he is. Never mind. So I spot him. I see his missiles, and they're going to hit a rock. So um, I engage him again, throw out some missiles, disable... The usual stuff, everything you should do. He, of course, jumps. So, I think it was at this point where I think I just gave up trying to f catch him. So, yeah, this is where I gave up and I went home. Because we were getting capped. He hit me a few times, so that did quite a bit of damage. But I didn't really care at the time. I was thinking, okay, there's somebody in our base. We need to get the guy in our base. Um... Diablo the ninja, he, he is definitely a ninja because he gets, he got into our base I think like two or three times this match. It was kind of, it was annoying and confusing at the same time. At one, it was like, damn it, he's there again. Second, how did he do it? Because we owned all the points sometimes. And then third, respect, because you managed to somehow do it. Uh, um... Yeah. What were the other things I went on about? Oh, right, missiles. Not really showing anything to missiles. At this time, I'm like going, we need to go to G, because we needed to we needed to take G. We did not have nearly as much resource gain as they did, so we all went to Gamma. Um, and the usual giant, lovely mid-game fights happened. Um. And that was great, because that's one of the things I like about G, the battles. And these were the two destroyers that were on the other team. Um, this is the first time I saw the, enti the entire game, and it was actually kind of surprising, because I forgot they were on the other team, so I'm like, they're destroyers? I was like, oh, okay. Um, and there's that little extra fire rate bonus that you get from the gas power, so that was nice. Um, you can see how the damage was doing 
damage. Something went by me. I was zoomed in, so I had no idea what it was. It was a disruptor, I think, from what it looked like, but I wasn't sure. Um, no, it wasn't, actually. That was a hunter. Huh. So since G was done and I saw somebody was capping A, I moved to A, and I was already maneuvering, trying to make my ship the proper direction so I can start moving towards him, and of course that, you know, doesn't do anything when you're, with that run, uh, that lovely randomness that you get from warping into different places. So this thing does turn like a brick, so that's where I think the gyro boost would be helpful. I swear that went right through the wall, but at the same time, it's not, because it's like, when you need to get somewhere, you can't, so that's where I say the gyro boost is not something worth it. I knew he was there, so I was like, okay, but, and this is Diablo, he somehow gets to our base, I forget how this time, but he did. So this is where that disable boost thing comes in. So you disable him at the range, use the boost, you just get ridiculously close to him, and then you just barrage him with everything. Of course, then he just jumps away and you look like a complete fool. <laughs> but that's like the most basic tactic you can use in a flagship. Um, so now I have friends, so I'm like, yay! Friends! So start approaching him again um, moving towards the middle there's the two destroyers of course and I saw the missiles I was like oh flak 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 and it didn't really matter and he was barraging me but he wasn't really doing so much damage but so I just continued on him but then he threw more and I threw up my flak again and I didn't take out as many I only took out two but it was still pretty decent so I mitigated a bit of damage so I came so we start we came up and we're like fighting head to head and I'm throwing everything he's got he's throwing everything I'm throwing everything I got at him he's throwing everything he's got at me it was lovely um then a random harpoon comes out of nowhere and he disappears and it was nice having friends for once because I saw my health go up when I was fighting him and I was just like yay and I was like Yes, the Coveter has done something for once. It was, like, really happy. Um, so that was that. Um, I didn't actually notice, because I was looking at my mini-map. I was like, okay, we're good. And I'm like, no, there's nobody here. And if you saw that by any chance, the... Uh, what's the word? The Coveter? The little... Our support ship? He was just healing the enemy. You don't heal them at all, but you still shoot them with your healing beam, which you could be better, you know, be shooting other things. Me. And he does do that, because I keep seeing my health every once in a while go back up. So it's nice that he's at least trying, but it just it just bothers me when I see that. It's like, this, no, you don't. Why? So I get that kill. Um... I start moving up again, and there's that frigate on the other team. Um, so I start barraging him with my usual thing, and that wonderful shield the frigate has blocks it. Oh my! I hate the shields so much. They're the most annoying thing in the world. It's... <sighs> the sniper has a shield too, but it only does 75. That thing's pretty much a giant rock. And it's really annoying, and they're really fast, so it's really hard to hit. Because that traverse speed you have on this thing, plus the travel time of your bullets, is a real annoyance. So actually, frigates do give me a lot of trouble in this game. Um, you can see the plasma effect of my drones are attacking him now. It's doing a little bit of damage, and it's also stripping away his armor, which is helping me do my increased damage, but... He then proceeds to get around me, and a destroyer appears. And then it was at this point that I realized I don't have allies. And I accept my fate.
So now I just want to mention something right now. Okay. You'll notice at this point, and this is, and I see a lot of rookies do this. I have to assume they're rookies because if there's somebody who's played for more than an hour, they have definitely not done this. He did it just there, up in the corner. It's where you, when you know you're going to get killed, it's you instantly think, I shall run, I shall repair, and I will return, and I don't die. But when you hit that jump drive, when you hit the jump to home thing, you lose practically all defenses. It's pretty much you saying, I have no armor, please shoot my freaking reactor core and ammunition stores. And I don't know why people do that. I didn't do it. I stayed there trying to do as much damage as I possibly could, which even at that wasn't much because I was being killed fast. But the brawler that you saw up in the corner, when he tried to get away, he could have done a bit of damage. Not much, mind you, at range, but to the frigate that was nearby him, he could have done a little bit of extra damage. He chose to warp off, and they pretty much just popped him because he literally said... This is my heart. You may have it. And here's the knife to stab it with. So, at this point, I'm just thinking, we're definitely going to lose this match, so... I'm just going to try and do a little bit of extra damage, and get a kill if I'm lucky. And that will give me some extra credits for whatever purposes. And research, because you, you get stuff for that, yeah. So I start hitting this guy, and I'm like... Okay, easy kill. I didn't know he could do that. Yeah, the thing with this thing is I think it's honestly more annoying than the hunter. I don't know how that's possible. I think it's more annoying than the hunter. Um I didn't know I don't know what that thing is actually. I don't know what it's called and I don't know what it can do. But now I know that it is something that is not good for close range. Engaging at close range, sorry. I did make a point of this, how at close range this thing, how close this thing has to be to actually engage anything. And I stand by that, because you do need to be close. I mean, your pretty much optimal range for every weapon system you have is 10,000 meters on average. And that is pretty limited. Oh wait, no, I'm using flak. 9,000 meters, that's my optimal range, pretty much. So for everything to be able to do damage, I have to be within that range. And I couldn't, I just couldn't make it. Um, no, I did make it. I closed the distance, but even with my full damage potential, I was still doing terribly. So, foolishly, I jumped to Alpha 1 at this point. I was thinking, okay, I can go finish him off, continue getting some loser points, and be on my way merry way. Um, so that was nice. Um, however, I kind of tunnel visioned at this point and was busy killing him, capping the point again so they couldn't warp in from this point. And I didn't realize there's somebody in her base. So I noticed that and I was like, oh crap, 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 crap. So I started jumping home, churning my ship too because this thing might as well start now. So I saw that, started going back, and I saw, oh, it's being black bullets there, taking care of him. I'm going to go help him, just in case. Um, I was looking at what he was in. He was in an enforcer, so I was like, okay, so he definitely can take him. And he does, because as soon as I get there, he explodes. I'm like, okay, out of here. So I'm going back to beta, because I see there's two people there and only one guy. So I think, okay, he needs help. And then I see him explode, so I'm like, oh, crap. Um, so it's another hunter. I disable him. I start barraging him with fire, missiles, all that good works. Um, he, of course, starts jumping, and I get really annoyed. And he starts doing missiles, and I move my bullets, but I moved them way too late. I was just like... And as they hit me, I was just going, oh, bugger. I'm supposed to be teaching YouTube, and this is what I do. <laughs> yeah.
so at this point, Gamma's back open, so I'm going back to Gamma. Everybody else is already going, so I didn't have to tell anybody. It went online as soon as I got there, and they were already being capped. I was like, okay, get there fast. I was just looking at my boost. Just, come on, boost. That two minute, that two minutes doesn't seem like a lot, but it's a lot, even for something that takes forever to move. So eventually I got into the cap circle, and I saw it was conflict, so we were even, so they couldn't cap anymore. And so I see this stupid frigate, and I start killing it again, and... Um... I don't remember if I ever kill it, though. I ran into the structure, by the way, so that was fun. And there's that traverse speed. It's just terrible. Um, yeah, fighting in the middle of the gas structure in a flagship is one of the most difficult and painful experiences you can ever have. And despite the amazing space battle we were having right now, which was totally awesome. Eventually, they just got more people than we did in the center, and they capped G. I didn't notice until long after, so it was kind of a shock. I was just like, how did we lose G? Because I was like, there's so many of us here. Wait, my map's gone. Never mind. My camera's freaking out here because I can't see anything. I take some damage from his explosion, but uh, nothing much. Um... So that was that wonderful battle. Um, flying around in a flagship in G, you want to stay on the outside. And there's that coveter. He's helping me. I was like, yay. Um, so I go back to B. I'm using the boosts, getting, trying to get, I'm capping that because since they have G, we need something to supplement that loss and make up for lost um, resources. That's the word. So I did that, started moving up towards uh, what's-its-face. Coveter was helping me. Got me all the way up to full health. Now this part of the battle was interesting. It's def it's towards the end of the battle. The video is almost over, I swear. Um, they went high. It was really, really confusing for me. I just saw these guys, and they went sky high. I'm like, why are they up there? And Andrew we, uh, 49 was warning us about that. I was really confused because it was just like, why are you going up so high? So I had to ascend, of course, and that was lovely. I was trying to figure out which one would be closer, so I picked him and accidentally fired a little bit too early, so only four of my missiles connected. Anyway, I started engaging him, doing damage. Um, I believe it was a... Oh, no. It was another enforcer, if I do recall. That uh, got the kill. I got a little bit of lag there. Sorry about that. And also, as a guy who has played the brawler, I'm telling you now that distance that kind of distance trying to shoot something is a bad idea I also do X I also just kept shooting because you don't suffer from friendly fire so so I started killing the frigate trying to kill him and then all of a sudden he s deploys that stupid shield and all my damage was pretty much just negated by it I was just like damn it so I kept shooting hoping to get closer so his shield be useful and apparently that doesn't work so at this point, I was just, yeah, I'm kind of doomed. And then his shield went down. I was like, yes, I can finally kill him. And then all of a sudden, his shield went back up. What is the cooldown rate on a frigate? I've never, I don't own one, so I have no idea. But anyway, I was like, I started ascending, trying to get the rock between him and me, so he couldn't fire on me. Um... It just goes to show just how terrible the maneuverability is on this thing. Believe it or not, I was ascending. You couldn't, you probably couldn't even tell, but I was actually going up. Um, that's how slow this thing is. It's, it's a brick in space. And also, despite having, I think, like two or three allies with me, I was still killed by one ship. A frigate, no less. And it has so little health compared to the 
to what I had for total health. I had 20,000 health, and it pretty much reduced it to zero by the time I got it to maybe a quarter of its health. So you die a lot. And at this point, I we all lost. Um, we got capped. I'm not sure how. My map was jammed. So that was lovely. So I spawn back in, and we lose. So, yeah. So that's how the br so that was so that's how that worked. <laughs> how that worked out? Yeah. So that is the USR flagship, one of the most easy to learn ships as well as the hardest to play. Um, I don't like it, but it's still in the game and people use it. So maybe I'm missing something. That's it from me. Hope to shoot you soon. See you next time.